like for instance, the, the last one, use of fillers is minimal and students are confident. So we can use, we could use different skills for, for just this activity. Okay. All righty, hand washing. Well, we all know our had to do hand washing and it's probably the first skill we teach our students. So this is just a procedure, but I just want to tell you a couple things as I was going through this. In, uh, I, I know probably at least half of you probably use DHO, um, Louise Simmer, Diversified Health Occupation. And then they had all, all those check off sheets, all those competencies and a nail brush was, was always in the check off, in the workbook. Well, don't use a nail brush unless you have a nail brush for all the students or they purchase their own in these times. And, and honestly, it's going to things are going to change. So I'm sure this is not going to change. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is common songs. Well, of course we know about her uh, happy birthday, but I didn't know about the two or three verses of the wheels of the bus on the bus. I did that with my grandson re real recently. He was screaming. He was so excited. But Erica loves Prince. Which is why my wall is purple. I'll put all my print stuff back up. After. Yeah, it's, yeah, <laughs> she does. And so we have um, Raspberry Beret. Of course, I knew she had to get that in. And also don't use a hand dryer. Just let it air dry or use a paper towel or a, a clean cloth towel. All righty. And hand sanitizer at home. I know I had first in the first few weeks of, of COVID, it was, oh my gosh, I don't have any hand sanitizer. Well, I found it online and I almost didn't have any alcohol, but thank goodness I found alcohol. Now make sure that you get the, uh, the ethanol alcohol, which is, is the stuff that you typically get at the drugstore. Um, methanol is toxic and I know it, it was being used and it was causing some problems. So the hand sanitizer contains at least 60% of alcohol. And um, it tells you there, read it, how to do it. And then it, uh, this is, these are the directions for making the hand sanitizer. And you could get really fancy. You don't have to have a, just a plain old hand sanitizer like, like this. Uh, you could, you know, have the kids draw on it. They, they like that. They, you know, incorporate everything, everything you could incorporate, math, English, science, social studies, art. And then if you have some aloe, put some aloe, about a third of a cup. And if you have some scented oils, essential oils, put in some of that, it smells good, or actually use lemon or lime. And then you mix it and you put it into a small bottle or a large bottle. And I actually had to use that until they became available again. Okay, next slide. And this, if you get want to get fancy and make disinfectant wipes, and you need a jar. Um, I know I looked this up and I was using washcloths because along with toilet paper, you couldn't find paper towels or disinfectant, but now paper towels are abundant and just follow those directions. Just be careful. If you have 70% alcohol, make sure you dilute it a little bit with water because it, it's, it's a, that's a kind of a high content and it's not the, the more you use the more percentage, it means it's better. It's not like that at all. So just be careful with that. And I put a little note on the bottom, be careful with the kids because you know if they're smaller, so smaller kids, they can use them improperly. They could just take it, they could wash it, put them on their face and contaminate their eyes. So you have to be really, 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 really careful. Also okay. remind them about putting them in hot cars. We know that there are a lot of people here that are still enjoying warm weather. I know we are in Georgia's like in the seventies here. So <laughs> some of you are like, oh, I wish that was the case if you guys have snow. Um, second standard we're gonna look at is the differentiating methods of controlling the spread of a pathogen. We've talked about hand washing. If time permits at the end, we're gonna show a little bit of our YouTube video on hand washing. 
A little preface to that is the camera, the camera that we use for some reason added 30 pounds to both of us. <laughs> so we'll just give you guys that warning, that little head. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at hand washing, gloving, and PPE, and then transmission based contact. Okay. On this, I've been doing this. I did it for about five years before I retired. And it's a little messy. And the kids love messy. They love messy. Me, not so much, but you know, seeing their excitement, it was, it was pretty funny. The first thing that we did, and these are using non-sterile gloves, just your run-of-the-mill gloves. And you they're pretty, they're, they're um, you could find them in the in the store pretty easily now. Have something to cover the table with because I'm telling you, it's going to get messy. So the first part is you're gonna, I, I used strawberry ice cream syrup. It looked, was really yummy. It would have been better on ice cream. However, we had to use this for this activity, but it looked more like blood. So that's something that the kids associate hospitals with. So it was more pertinent, pertinent to them. They, filled up a bowl with the strawberry syrup and now everybody needs their own bowl. But back then it was a little bit different. And you explain the activity to the kids, just simply talking through them how to remove the gloves safely. And they put their hands in, they get all messy and they, they love it and they, they take them out and they try to remove their gloves. However, they do not remove them well. They got, they got it on everything and probably none on the newspaper that we use, but everything, every, everywhere else. And then they, they take off their gloves and then either you watch a video or the teacher demonstrates how to use the gloves properly, how to take them on, put them on and take them off properly. And then they do it again and it's amazing. They were like, oh my goodness, wow, I, I, could, I did it. I, I don't have any of that syrup on my skin or blood on my skin. And um, it is easier to remove gloves if, if uh, the syrup is wiped off prior, re the, removing the gloves. Okay. Do it yourself, germ glow in the dark. We brainstormed about this. And Eric is very, very, very creative. You need inexpensive lotion, go to the dollar store. You need that runny lotion, not the really good expensive type. The, you need it really not thick. And then you go to Michael's or any other craft store or Amazon and you get this, um, this, it, this is like a glitter glow in the dark. Actually, I'm lying to you. I can't find my glow in the dark glitter. Eric is going to kill me. This is really new, <laughs> but it was the only thing I could find. But it's, it's very inexpensive at Michael's. It was six dollars. I want to say it was six dollars and forty-seven cent. But it, they were having a special where it was buy one get one half price on a lot of stuff on the aisle. So uh, I think it was like a six-ounce bottle of glow in the dark glitter, and you will not need that much was the $6 and you would probably keep it for half of your teaching career. And Eric and I had really a lot of fun playing with that. We were going into the, into the bathroom. You need a dark room. They, the kids put it on and then they wash their hands as you have properly taught them. And then they go into the room and they see all this glitter. It's just kind of like germ glow without the, the germ glow. Like without, the, without the germ. So seven, I would say seven bucks for something that you would normally have to pay, um, what? 20, 30. Yeah. It depends. On the person on PPE, right now, we've kind of talked a little bit about this. At this time, it is difficult to obtain PPE. We need to keep them with the healthcare providers. And I know this is consumable and we typically order it each year. I mean. I would get those boxes of those yellow horrible gowns and, and use those, but we don't have this luxury, at least in, in our county where Erica and I are. 
and the material can't be shared. Not that gloves ever were shared, but occasionally we'd share a gown. So we brainstormed some household goods that could be used and we did the best we could, guys. You just kind of use your imagination. Okay, go to the next slide, Erica. So gloves are easy to get and they're inexpensive, but if you can't just use the old rubber gloves, I think they're Playtex, Playtex yeah. gloves. And for an isolation gown, you could use uh, a, a man's button down shirt, hopefully large, and then you put it on backwards and either sew on some strips of fabric on the top part of the shirt and the middle part on the waist so they can actually tie both, both sets of ties. I would use, um, I personally would use safety pins because I'm not a sewer. And I think these, this is called bouffant, bouffant. I mean, help me out here maybe. Uh, bouffant, <laughs> bouffant. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. The little hats, use a shower cap. You could get them at the dollar store. Safety goggles, oh, well, you know, glasses. Or shades. Whatever you want. And mask, well, we should all have masks. All right, next slide. Okay. So this is one of my favorite, 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 favorite activities and is very relevant to what's going on now and it is how does a disease spread throughout a population? And normally I'll show you something really quickly, come out of that. Normally I would use phenolphthalein, which is a chemical that you would not have to buy but you can go to your chemistry department and get it. And you put some in a cup or a test tube and they walk around. You have one person in the class that has this in their, in their cup or test tube. Everyone else has water, but you can see that they don't know the difference. And either in, in that, but if you don't have phenolphthalein, if they're doing it at home, I use citric acid and baking soda. And so what the students would do, I get these little cups, if they're at home, inexpensive. I learned this song from my daughters. The little cups from Kroger or somewhere like that, they're like five bucks. You write the numbers on the bottom so that you can keep track of who has the different cups because that is gonna be important. If you have 20 students in the class, then you make sure you only have 20 cups or 20 test tubes. If you have 29, then you make sure you have those. I usually look at my roster and see how many students I have and I have just enough of those cups in the classroom. So every student comes up, gets a cup, and then I tell them we're gonna do a little mixer, like a Halloween party or something that you just went to. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cup and you're gonna pour the contents of your cup and their cup, and then they're gonna pour half of it back in yours. And then you're gonna do that with three other people in the classroom but they have to keep track of who they came in contact with first, second, and third. I usually play some party music, nothing that they usually like because I don't like that kind of music, it gives me a headache now at my age, but something that they, would, that they could do and then when the music stops, I tell them once they have their three contacts, then they sit down. That way I know that they've already um, had their contacts. If they're doing this at home, I'll show you um, what they did. They record their, their contacts in order. And then after they sit down, I roll out this sheet of paper in front of my desk that says, welcome to the free clinic. And then they come up to me and they get tested. So this is showing, I did this with my granddaughter. She was quarantined at home with us for a couple of weeks when it first started. And we used her doll babies at home. So we had her different doll babies. And cause I was trying to explain to her why she was at home with Nene and granddaddy instead of being at school with her friends. 
and we just took her stuffed animals and dolls and stuff. And I put, I didn't have the cups, but I just used the little takeout um, things, containers that they give us. And I put the citric acid in one, I told her just to mix them. And I said, let's see how this spreads through your baby dolls. And when it started to bubble, she was like, oh, okay. So I said, one of them started off with it. I think she had seven or eight grand or seven or eight dolls. By the time she was finished, five of them had it. So that was a good way to say, this is why you had to stay home because something, a disease spreads like that and people get sick. So this is why they have to keep their contacts. If you have the 20 students, the first student says, I, um, my first contact was Renee, then it was Nancy, then it was Ellen. The second person would say it was Erica, and then this person, this person. And then after they've gotten tested, usually the phenyl phalene gives a huge reaction because when they see it turn pink, they're like, oh, you gave it to me. And then, they, and I was like, hold up, because we're going to figure out who patient zero was. And so when they look at it, they have to clear their name as to why they weren't patient zero. And they would say, if they had it, they were like, well, I wasn't patient zero because I exchanged with this person and this person does not have it. Or I, so I know that I was not the first person. I had to get it from my second or third contact. And then they were like, well, it wasn't me. So that's something that's really good for them to learn about patient zero. But with COVID-19 right now, what they hear a lot about is the term contact tracing. And so this is also a good activity to show them how contact tracing is done and they can differentiate between contact tracing and patient zero. I also mentioned in this, why they were out at the beginning of the semester. I tell them it wasn't because everybody was getting sick, the idea of flattening the curve. It wasn't, that's why they're in school now in a lot of places is that the hospitals did not have the capacity to take care of the influx of patients that they knew that they were gonna get because of the high rate of infection with COVID. And then they look at, ask questions, uh, what could they do to keep an infection rate down? Uh, talk about people in the medical field who would um, be associated with this disease, not just the doctors, but the epidemiologists. This is a good way to talk about all the different health professions that they could do if they don't like blood, because usually when they went on their internship, that's when they realized they couldn't be a doctor when they would pass out at the sight of blood. Um, and then how this um, activity would um, help them with other, um, talking about other diseases. All right, we have okay. a couple of more minutes. So I wanted to briefly do a shameless plug on the lymphatic and immune systems, because these, as I mentioned earlier, these are systems that are rarely discussed in an anatomy class because you have the systems that you have to go over in a certain period of time, and these are usually left over. Plus, for a lot of teachers, they tend to be complicated. And so teachers generally uh, do not talk about these. I didn't really go into depth about the lymphatic and immune system until graduate school. And so what I did was I took the information that they would need to know in module two about how diseases spread, the T cells, the B cells, the lymphocytes, all those different things and brought it down to their level with some activities. And then when we were brainstorming for this, Ellen came up with a great activity. She always says, I'm the creative one. But she we're chasing and changing that. <laughs> she came up with the activity of what making a resume. No, 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 no. They're gonna have to wait. We don't have time. Okay. All right. So that was a good one. One ass was another one, but we won't talk about that. Yes. Right. So wait, I, Erica, let me interrupt you. Somebody, okay. I'm looking at the chats, and somebody. At the end, let's go back to the first slide. Somebody want, requested the first slide. The very first one? 
uh, maybe the first, uh, probably not the very first, maybe the After second. the disclaimer, I think. Oh, the disclaimer? After that. Okay. After the disclaimer? I believe so. Kathy, can you tell us, was that the one, Kathy? You can just put it in the chat. Was that the slide you were interested in seeing? It's Kathy Reagan. Reagan, I think. yeah. Okay, well, let's just. At the beginning of the case study, she says. Oh, right here. Okay. okay. Maybe she wants to take a picture of it with her phone or something. Oh, okay. okay. We and have a picture of us. Picture of us too. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay, going back, Erica. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I hate doing this because my eyes, I'm like, when people do this, like, will you please stop? All right. But we were at the end. And so if you want to know more information, we have a book, Medical Science 101. <laughs> <laughs> With our Lucy and Ethel famous picture that we always do. It, they have eight modules in it. And this is, this as we said, this is our 101 book. If you, the book, we have a closeout because we're doing a digital platform. And so you can buy them on our website at esquaredhomeschool.com. Or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on Facebook. And I'm going to show you some of these at the end. And here are our emails. We love to help. Uh, teachers, if you have any questions, Ellen, the retired teacher who cannot stay still, will answer a lot of your questions. I, I check it every single day, guys. I'm, I'm really good about that email, not my others or my texts. <laughs> but I, I believe on the website is also my number, my phone number. Really okay. cool. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna show them the website because something else that we're doing is. Um, we have a feature on our website called Live Chats with Dr. Katz. It rhymed. I'll be on there also, but it just rhymes to have her on there. See, isn't she creative? Isn't she amazing? <laughs> okay, this is our website. We do, if some of you are like, I can't remember any of that, but you have uh, teachers, if you have a teacher's pay teacher's account, we do have our modules on there as well as the digital workbook. It is more expensive on there because they do take a significant cut. But if you come to our website, we have a la carte where you can get the modules individually or you can buy the workbook, the entire book. And we have the book also digitally. And we have started adding our 102 uh, modules. Some of the activities that we have presented today are in our Medical Science 101 book. We have not completed 102, but we did put the modules on here. And this is the module for 102. What I really wanted to get to is our live chats with cats. We're going to do one on next Wednesday from 4 to 5. So you can go to our website and register. And this is just gonna be a general Q&A. If you have some questions for us about different activities that we do, um, some of the questions about our content that we already have, feel free to ask us during that hour experience with us. And one more thing I wanted to show you guys before we open up for questions. YouTube, don't forget to put on sound, Erica, as you always do. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Because I always say I forget to put the sound on. And it, and it, I don't know if you guys do that also when you're at school and the kids are watching the video and they're like, oh, we didn't have any sound whatsoever. I'm like, you could have told me that a lot earlier. Okay. This is our YouTube channel where we have some basic videos. We tried to keep them under four minutes because we know the attention span of some of our kids is like a gnat. So the bleeding and wounds is our very popular one, measuring weight, blood pressure. But the one we're gonna show you today is hand washing. 
for two seconds, basically. Yeah. Keep in mind, we said that the um, the camera added 30 pounds to us. So please be nice. And it does have clothes. <laughs> and if you have students, take a dollop of soap oh. and start washing your hands in between your fingers, the tops of your hands. Okay, that's enough, Erica. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want I just want to add that our book is closing out at $30. It's it's beautiful. I mean, it's a really nice book. So and at the back of it, it has the portfolio, it has quizzes and tests in here with the answer key. So you're not having to <laughs> I know I know the terminology. That is in and of itself. And then we have in the back a portfolio for the students so that they can have a check off. So as they go through everything, they're, they're, um, they get their grades on here. And at the end, you have a way that you can justify this is how you made an A or B or C or D in the class. And look at this, guys. I just got to show you. This is our CPR. Um, okay. it, it's in the book. You just for the, and we, you put take it out and you put it on a pillow and there's your mannequin. Is that clever or what? That was Erica's idea. And not only that, but we also created an AED with instructions. So I think we're about done. Yes, we maybe. So we, uh, if you have any questions for us, we're here. Oh, oh, wait, one more thing. Halloween is just over. I just got. I, I just left um, the store right before this. Everything is so cheap. So if you wanna buy stuff for next year, like skeletons or brains or hearts, they're half yeah, price. I did the, the webinar last week, we were doing the um, tracing the flow of blood through the heart. And so they have the gelatin molds for um, the parties, the Halloween parties. And I got, they were, three they were three dollars then but i think they're half price now and so it was a good way to make some molds and then uh because we use chocolate i think if you teach anything with food they pay attention and we made a chocolate heart and they use candy straws to um trace how the um, blood went through and it was i usually use skittle i mean not skittles but um, Twizzlers for that, but my grandbaby was with me and I was like, you can have the Twizzlers when we're done. She was like, oh, I don't eat those things. And she showed me the straws and I was like, this is great. This is even better because the straws were red. So I was like, I'm doing veins, blue arteries. I had the yellow for uh, cordoning off the different heart chambers and everything. I was like, this is great. And then she got to eat all of those. So it was a win-win. Okay. Right. There is a question, Erica, there is a question about, and you too, Ellen, uh, what store were you finding these cool um, Halloween? Uh, Party City. And, and Michael's. Yeah. Party City, Michael's. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, even there are Halloween or there used to be Halloween stores up that came. Just yeah, but Halloween. hurry up and get it because, you know, as soon as Halloween is over, the Christmas stuff goes up. So when I went in, I was like, nobody's going to buy any of this stuff because nobody in their right mind should be having a party. But um, so the store was empty and I was like, I'll go back on November 1st. But we had no power. <laughs> uh, can you give us a little preview about your upcoming book? What um, some of the activities or some of the standards that you plan to cover in your in your new release? Well, yes. We have, we have a couple of our modules that are on our website already. Um, and teachers they, pay teachers. We have Burns. And with Burns, we paired that with the integumentary system. Mm -hmm. She does the unit going into the different types of burns. And then I go through the hair, skin, and nails. And we meshed it together with activities and quizzes and tests. And another one that we have is fractures, strains, and sprains. And we put the skeletal system with that one. So as we said, all of our modules have the information is the, is, 
you how many they're like 20 pages so it's the complete lesson it has the quizzes it has um the activities and everything that you would need so i thought this was appropriate for now because i don't know especially since everyone is from around the country um if anybody's school system is already starting to shut down again this is a great way to just get a module like here it has to check off in it parent can check it off You're like okay kid whatever and then you have documentation that they've actually done the assignments i uh, would one of you put your um website again in the um chat or say or do you do it i always make a typo or something you know i'm worthless when it comes to that well ellen you can say it out loud for us right yes e squared edu oh, I, see, I spelled it wrong e squared educational experiences and i if you want to come to our chat next week we would love to have you it'll be fun and we'll give you ideas because we have ideas I mean, do you see, do you see my head? It's just bursting. I mean, okay, I'm not, I'm not seeing, Erica, I'm not seeing, are you still typing it? Yeah, I, I see that it's saying just to Jackie. I need to put everyone. Right, and then also someone was asking about your YouTube channel, which I know I just that put that. I just put that up. Okay, so is that uh, E squared educational experiences, is that a dot .com or dot .org or we just put which that? One? The that's um, I got you. E squared homeschool.com. Okay. So even though we're not home really homeschool anymore. No, it, yeah. it, it has morphed, but it's good for and I was thinking this is ideal for if you don't know if your school or something's gonna shut down anytime soon. They'll have activities that they could do if they're at school cheap activities that they could do on our first book because it was written for homeschool it has the parent check off but it can be parent teacher it's just a check off to make sure that they've done what they were supposed to to get the points that they deserve okay and the um e squared educational experiences that's your youtube channel that is youtube okay all right just i'm confirming for everybody and poor jennifer first year teacher you'll you'll make it There'll we, never be another year as hard as that one, right? Except for maybe this one. This one, this one is one of those. I, I do teacher support specialists, and I've also helped with student teachers. So this is one of those years that I would tell a new teacher: if you get through this year, you can get through the entire thirty years and get a retirement because nothing is going to be as hard as this. I don't know about you guys, but we have had five schedule changes in four months. And that does not include daylight savings time. So. Yeah, I like what Kathy said here that we're all like first year teachers this year, you know, yes. just all, all in this together. I, well, any well, other, any well, other well, questions? Stay down, down south. Just I'm bet. sorry, Ellen, what, bless your heart, you bet, yeah. <laughs> cardiovascular system right <laughs> hey i love the way that you all had like a activity that accompanies the um, body system and we know that um the academic foundation which is our first standard that's where all the anatomy and physiology and diseases and disorders are all in that um academic foundation um one and um that's where kids really struggle the most too, right? And so just love your creativity and what you um, bring um, to support health science teachers. How about any party messages from Erica and Ellen? Got a couple of minutes and um, I'll just defer to you and then I'll say one thing as we close. Well, good luck to all of you. We enjoyed sharing and, and talking. We love to talk to our coworkers. And you're, you are now our co-workers. So we, enjoy, we enjoyed it. Thanks for your comments, very kind comments. And hopefully if Nancy's willing, we could do this again next semester. Okay. Hey, I heard that New York accent. There. I know, next semester. Yeah, next how do you semester. spell that? 
how you spell it. Okay. Nancy, Nancy, could I say one thing? I don't know if people um, subscribe to the uh, Facebook um, group, but um, I, from Massachusetts, love bantering with some of the folks on the Facebook and sharing ideas. And people were talking about the GI and the poop, and I had done the small bowel with the, in, the knee highs, and people were grabbing some of those activities. <sighs> And um, it was becoming very comical. So if people are not on that Facebook page, they really <laughs> should join because uh, there is a plethora of um, activities and people are really willing to share. So um, they should get on that and, um, and share. Yeah, and the Facebook page is sponsored by um, the teacher organization within the consortium that's Health Science Educators Association. You do not have to be a member to, to be a part of the Facebook group. You can just um, just do a search for SC, I mean, HSEA Facebook group and it'll come up and then, you know, you'll be admitted. We'll do a background check on you and then you'll be admitted to the um, group. But um, it is a great uh, professional learning network and we see a lot of exchange going on there. And that was really our hope when we, when we created that. So remember, if you're interested in a certificate of participation, it's not a CEU, but it may work for you to document your professional uh, development. And uh, we'll be happy, to, we, we do um, provide those for those um, individuals who are able to attend these sessions live. So you can just text me, I mean, I'm sorry, you can email me and it's Nancy, it's the longest email in America, nancy at healthscienceconsortium.org. And um, probably back by popular demand will be Ellen and Erica or Lucy. Lucy, can you raise your hand? Well, no, who do you guys think is Lucy? Oh, she, oh, she already revealed Lucy. Hey, can we see your, do you have a cast on your leg? Okay, all right. We just wanted to verify. Okay. It's true. When, she, then, broke her, when she broke her leg this time, I didn't even flinch because uh, when was it? This is the third time this year that you've broken your leg. No, it's just a second. This <laughs> <laughs> The first time she was, I was like, what happened? She was like, we were hiking in Salt Lake City and I fell down the cliff. And I was like, most people that I know, right, Jennifer? So I'm, I'm used to this. We, she had a scooter. Um, I mean, she, she, she's done a lot of things and she, I was like, you just need to get the handicap placard. But then I was like, no, we would be parking in like the best, <laughs> areas all the time <laughs> are you an adrenaline junkie yes I knew it. <laughs> me too great well thank thank, thank you everybody. everybody we appreciate you coming thank, you. thank you guys we hope to see you on our live chats with cats next week good luck guys yeah, good luck yes. all right take care okay are we are we saying goodbye now we're saying goodbye. Okay. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>